Hey, what's up? Welcome to Season 2, Episode 1 of Movie Dumpster. We're back for the new year, and we got some fucking crazy-ass, not really an adaption, but an adaption of a Stephen King novel? Story? Whatever? Sure. We're talking Lawnmower Man from 1992, directed by Brett Leonard. I'm Joe Lascola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Connor Pius Asshole McGraw. Welcome to the dumpster. You know, Cybo Man, if you want, you could you could call me Lawnmower Man. Everybody does. Jerry says that's because I fix things and, and I mow lawns better than anybody in the whole world. That's what Terry said. If you ever want anything fixed, Cybo Man, I could fix it for you, okay? Boy, this this sure is an adaptation, isn't it? Uh, you know, when people use the term loose, <laughs> tri- you know, a loose adaption, like it's loosely based on this fucking story. Like, this is literally the loosest adaption in the history of fucking adaptions. I mean, we're talking about in name only, with the exception of like one scene that w- in the context of the film doesn't even mirror the context of the, of the short story. Okay. So, so this is based on a Stephen King short story called the lawnmower man. Um, has anybody else read it besides me? I haven't read it, but I'm kind of aware of what it's about. Cause I've had it summed up to me before. And even in a few brief sentences, I'm like, wow, that's not the movie I saw. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat as Connor on that one. Literally not at all. Um, the original short story, it, to me, I thought it, it's a creepy fucking weird, thing and basically like this satyr devil type demon guy shows up to this dude's house to cut his lawn right and he's just doing wacky shit like eating fucking grass and and running around his yard like naked and like and the mower's like going by itself and this guy's just like dancing around naked and he's got like cloven hoof feet and shit it's really fucking weird is this like co- is this co- cocaine and cough medicine, Stephen King? Um, I think so. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, this has nothing to do with any of what I just said. Uh, in, in so much that Stephen King sued twice. Did he really? Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think he won. He well, uh, well, he won the first time, and then after home video release, they released it like I guess for the director's cut or one of the releases. They put his name back on it, and the and the courts were like, "What the fuck are you doing? We told you to not do this." <laughs> <laughs> the graphic designer was like, "Oh shit, I used the wrong archive stuff." And then I, I guess they had to pay like the, Stephen King won like a ten thousand dollars suit, and then like every day that uh, that version of the box was in production, they had to give Stephen King money. Oh, now some more fun trivia with this game. Guess how many licensed video game tie-ins this game has. Oh, Jesus. I know there's one for Genesis. There are two. Okay. There was one for Genesis. I think it was called Cyber Wars. And one for the Virtual Boy? No, there's... <laughs> <laughs> that would make sense. It was for it was for DOS, and I owned it as a child, because it, I found it in some box full of, like, weird-ass software that had, like, Battle Beasts and Doom. Um, and I remember playing the fuck out of it, because it was all I had. I didn't have any consoles at the time. And it takes place exclusively in the virtual reality section of this movie. And if you played this game, like I did before you saw the movie, the movie in your head was way different. Also, it was hard as balls and barely functions. And if I played it now, I would mail it back to the manufacturer (laughs) and developer and say, fuck you. Uh, This movie is like four movies in one. (laughs) First of all, I watched the director's cut of this. So did I. I watched the theatrical cut. Uh, which is, which was an hour and 48 minutes. How long was your movie, guys? Uh, two hours and 10 or 20? Something like that. You could fit my movie into your movie, basically. Oh, man. The first... <laughs> we're going to get into it, but the first, I don't know, half <laughs> hour of this film, I wish was a feature-length thing, and I'm going to get into that. <laughs> you mean you mean the monkey? Oh, yeah. Fucking Robo-Chimp. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, you mean Cybo-Man? Cybo-Man. <laughs> Holy shit. 
<laughs> he looked like an Ultraman villain. <laughs> like, the best time that I had with this film was the, the first 30 minutes, and then everything else is like, am I watching a different movie? What the fuck is happening here? So to plot crunch this, I'll just use the movie's uh, tagline, and it was, um, uh, God made him simple, science made him a god. Colon, the history of the internet. <laughs> This was the alternate timeline of the Terminator series. I feel like this is a parallel story to last uh, or yesterday's Target. Oh my god, it could be. Wow, could be. Yeah, I think that's what's going on here. It's like Terminator and yesterday's Target and the Lawnmower Man all exist like in on intersecting timelines. Like they're all a result. Maybe maybe Job actually crawled into uh, the cyber uh, the the Cyberdyne uh, uh, mainframe at the end of this movie, and he is the reason that Judgment Day happens because he launches all the nukes. Oh, that's what I think it is, man. That's why he he becomes aware <laughs> and he goes right into the fucking nuke. He goes right for those launch codes. It doesn't matter if you can fucking you can fucking burn the arm and the chip. It don't fucking matter, man. He's coming. You can take that little thing out of fucking Baldwin's leg. It doesn't matter. So the actual plot of this movie is that Pierce Brosnan is a gross, dirty, hippie scientist named Dr. Larry Angelo. His name his name's Larry. You would I would be so lucky to be as handsome as Pierce Brosnan in this film. <laughs> He's like a pirate. Like, he's trying to sell me, like, Old Spice? He's frequently shirtless, waving a cigarette around in people's faces. He always looks unshowered and sweaty, but he's still Pierce Brosnan. He looks like the cover of that John Mellencamp album. I forget what it's called. He's got the fucking earring and everything. Oh, man, that's one fucking sexy man with that earring. <laughs> he is, though. I wanted to pull on that thing. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's working on, like, I don't know, smart science to make chimps uh, intelligent, uh... And the company he wants to work for, or what company he's working for, wants to use this this research for military purposes, and he's like, no! What was the name of this company again? I, I believe it was called the Umbrella Corporation? Yeah, it's totally Umbrella Corporation. It might as well be. Uh, Virtual Space Industries. Uh, so then Larry, uh, uh, manipulates a, a simple man who mows lawns and tricks him into his house, into his basement. It all sounds very predatory, because it kind of is. Basically uses him as a guinea pig, and then shit hits the fan in hilarious ways. Shit just stops making sense at one point, and it's like, okay, that happened. Uh, yeah, it does, because this movie just presumes things, and you're like, no, go back and explain that. There's a whole, like religious, social commentary, futuristic, what have you message in this movie. It's like the movie stopped for a break, came back, and was tripping balls on acid. Yeah. Somebody went to the bathroom and took a fucking dab or something, man, because what's going on here? So we roll right on to, into the beginning of this movie with, like, a really goofy piano roll, and, like, it's just blam, right into virtual space interviews, and there's already an argument happening that uh, we didn't see the start of. Well, it, start, it actually starts with this like fucking literal text block yes uh, explaining how vr is the future and I i'm sitting there thinking man <laughs> yes. 92 they really thought vr was gonna take off dude pornhub was like holy shit this makes total sense let's do it it's 2019 and vr still hasn't taken off uh <laughs> not in like the regular world no uh and uh, uh larry angelo is having an argument with uh with a corporate suit named tim's about the uh the practicality of his research and how they want to use it for military purposes and he's like my, my chimp i love my chimp well, well keep in mind too connor this place that they're in i mean i make the umbrella corporation joke and for those out there it's the main corporation in the resident evil series it's this evil fucking horrible thing and uh so i i make that joke because when you get to this facility it literally is like the 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 fucking the, the facility that Sarah Connor's in, fucking Terminator 2. It's like all the lights are real low and blue, and it's like, looks like a fucking, like, it looks like a prison. Yeah, man, it's it's Nest, straight up. Every surface is gray or, or concrete or steel. And I think at some point in the movie, the, when Job arrives there, he goes, This place looks like a dungeon. I was right there with him. Yeah, you need the fucking Mo discs to get out of there. <laughs> so. We're, like, thrust... Okay, so Pierce Bros is arguing with that guy, and he's like, oh, he's my fucking monkey! He's the smartest monkey that we've ever had! And blah, blah, blah! I sound like Sam Neill, and me and Sam Neill are the only two British men who have the same accent. <laughs> it's true. You bred raptors? He's like, no, monkeys. Then we get this fucking chimpanzee with this RoboCop ass fucking helmet on? What is this chimp training for? To go fight the bad guys in Quake? <laughs> Dude, he's practicing for fucking Unreal Tournament. <laughs> What is he doing? What is this arena they put him in? Is he fighting virtual monkeys? He's playing a Doom beta? Like, what is what is happening? What were those spikes and thorns? And what the fuck? Why was he? Why were there people on pyramids with, like, fucking giant, like, anti-air turrets? Dude, I laughed 
the entire for this entire sequence. I'm like, I want this film. I just want Robo Chimp the whole movie. I don't need any of this other lawnmower man shit. My favorite thing about this whole simulation is that like a lot it's all like 3D and everything's fucking super colorful and psychedelic, but what he's shooting at is basically Space Invaders pixels. <laughs> Like, they're just these flat fucking static images. Yes. And all the while, he's, like, in this fucking gyroscope, and the image... Okay. (laughs) Here here you go. Here's the imagery. It's pretty pretty goofy. It's a chimpanzee dressed like RoboCop in a fucking gyroscope screaming. (laughs) And inside the virtual reality, he's shooting things. He's shooting other monkeys from what it looks like but there's i mean but i said like i said they just look like space invaders like uh sprites there's just there's no detail to them but they also shriek like monkeys when he shoots them oh my god it, it's just, it's it's wonderful and then and then hal from uh hal from 2001 keeps going target eliminated yeah yeah well it's like the fucking it's like okay so this is where like terminator comes in too because we're crossing all over the place we got fucking terminator we got predator we got fucking robocop all kind of intermingling here on this fucking monkey and uh the simulation terminates or whatever the the virtual reality terminates and Pierce Brosnan is basically just like ah fuck so the way that this works is the the test subject is uh injected with this chemical protein thing uh it might as well be fucking LSD as far as I'm concerned or like peyote uh, you know extract it's, it's like DMT and they're getting shot and they like shoot up lab animals with this shit and then they fucking put a virtual reality thing on their face and somehow that increases their intelligence that's that's what's going on here it doesn't induce a seizure like you think it would well <laughs> yeah um so like then it just like stops and then this monkey escapes he, he plans an escape plan? Oh, yeah. The monkey goes all Charles Xavier. He has a fucking bobby pin, and he opens up his cage. Yeah, he fucking unlocks it, and he fucking jumps out in his fucking RoboCop regalia. Yeah, they don't take the suit off him? What the fuck? He's got this little visor that opens and closes? Yeah, he's got fucking Jarvis talking to him. <laughs> the idea is... is I, I, listeners... Please just stop what the fuck you're doing. Whatever you're doing right now, pull out, you know, if you're listening to us on the phone or your computer, just go on the fucking internet and look up Chimpanzee Lawnmower Man. Or just look up Cybo Man Lawnmower Man. Cybo Man. (laughs) So this fucking, this fucking monkey, uh, Bobby Pins, you know, he fucking breaks himself out of his cage and he, and he's walking down the hallway and he's, and he sees this dude and he's like, you all move creep. No, he doesn't. He he looks at him, and he, like, uh, you know, his fucking visor goes over his eyes, and he, like, targets this dude's gun, and, like, again, like, I, there's, like, this little Jarvis guy in his ear going, target acquired, target assessed. He has to target the gun and then identify it with a several different icons in his visor before he actually grabs it. This is a very unpractical combat system. This fucking monkey identifies the security card and then the, the weapon takes the weapon, shoots the guard in the fucking face, and then takes the card and then makes his escape. But he doesn't really, because he's running throughout all these hallways, and there's, like, a bunch of dudes, like, guards, like, uh, going after him. And then it's this weird cut where it's showing, like, close-ups of the chimp, and then, like, a slow-mo, like, medium shot of this dude, like, turning around with a gun and then, like, shooting. Yeah, fucking Barry Burton with a magnum. <laughs> <laughs> Hope this wasn't the chimp's blood. They didn't have the budget to film an actual, like, chimp doing anything from, a, like, an actual wide shot. So it's all filmed with, like, pitter-patter of his feet. Yeah. An uncomfortable close-up of his face. Screaming. And it's all composited together to make this really kind of, like, shit-tastic series of shots where you're like, okay, I guess someone shot the monkey? I gotta say, I was cheering for this fucking monkey to get the hell out of Dodge. I mean, yeah. Totally. And I thought he fucking died! I thought he got fucking shot, too! And what's hilarious, I thought he had, like, a psychic link with Pierce Brosnan, because Pierce Brosnan wakes up in a cold sweat, and he's like, huh! After the fucking ape gets shot. I was talking to Joe before we started recording, and it just made me think of fucking that movie Monkey Shines, where, uh... There's this monkey that's helping this paraplegic, and he has this visual connection with the thing, and it's running through the fucking town. Um, also has to do with weird mad science, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It had tamp- tampering with animals and brains and things. Is this where he meet his wife, who's just a f- a- an amusing character? She's just there, and then he's, like, spying on his neighbors, watching the fucking dude, like, beat the shit out of the kid from the last action hero in Prehysteria. Oh my god, is that who that kid was? Yeah. I love the fact that that dad comes home and still has his fucking construction hard hat on, and then just starts whacking his son around, he's like, ah, 
out what's your bike doing in the driveway. <laughs> that pipe was in there, and I, I, you, I fucking told you to move it, and you didn't, smackaroo. I just got home from my hard-working blue-collar job. And Dr. Angelo doesn't call the cops or, like, you know, some kind of social worker. He just watches. He just closes his blinds and goes, hell of a thing, which will come back later on in this movie. Not even. He fucking lights up a cigarette, because we're doing that a lot. Well, then it cuts to the next day, and you get back into the monkey's fucking predator vision, and it, like, <laughs> zooms in on the fucking church, and it's, and, it, and the fucking Jarvis just says to him, church, sanctuary. And I'm like, wait a second, the ape is dead, so is this just, like, a transition we're doing? Yeah, I was very confused for a minute. I was, like, I, I, I was confused, and then I was happy because the chimp was alive. Oh, okay, in my cut, the chimp dies. Like, straight up? There's none of this. There's none of this what you're talking about. It's not present at all. You missed the best part of the fucking movie. You missed the best part of the movie. Probably the most fucked up part of the movie, to be honest. And that's saying something. This next ten minutes, I wish was the entirety of the movie. Okay. First of all, I guess they forgot to remove some of the credits or, like, move them to the beginning of the film because... All that shit happens, right? Like, Pierce Bronson wakes up and blah, blah, blah. Like, we've already been introduced to the Lawnmower Man titles, like, ten minutes ago. Then it cuts to, like, the sun rising, and then it says, screenplay by whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> and then I'm like, wait, what the fuck is happening? And then, and then like Sean said, you know, uh, you know, the monkey zooms in on, on the church or whatever. So, this fucking, this fucking chimp walks down this big ass hill to this church and then we and then we're introduced to Jeff Fahey's character Job Smith whistling at a blue jay whistling at a blue jay he like walks out of the he looks like he just left a fucking fairy cabin or something he lives he lives like on the side of this church in like a fucking shack which i have something to say about that like i will get into how shitty this fucking priest is oh totally but like you can't let the guy live in the fucking church. You got him in the shack in the back of the damn thing. A shack that he pays for. He sure does. So the chimp, like, he's like in the bushes and like starts rustling in the bushes. And Jeff, he's like, who's there? I got strawberries. You want strawberries? I want strawberries. By the way, uh, just going to put it right out there. Uh, Jeff, Fahey's character is Simple Jack. You know, he's he's. Oh, there's there's no. Qu- th- okay. Okay. The joke, don't go full retard from Tropic Thunder, directly oh, applies yeah, this yeah. movie. Um, and that's that's what we're doing here. Um, it's very, like, I mean, I think Jeff A., he plays it well, but it's just... It's still too much. It's still too much. It's not as bad as Rosie O'Donnell in, in The Other Sister or whatever the fuck the name of that movie is. Uh, riding the bus with my sister. Yeah, it's not that bad, but yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. So anyway, the fucking chimp creeps up on him and he's like... It, and then this is the moment of the film where I'm like, this is what I need. I need RoboChimp and Jeff Fahey to team up, go on the road in a fucking buddy, <laughs> a, a, a road trip movie, like buddy cops, and they have to fucking like fight a bunch of government agents. That's what I fucking want. Because that's what we're doing here. <laughs> the chimp like goes over to him and he's like, he's like, hey, hey, uh, you, 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 you look like Robo Man. What the fuck's his name, Sean? Cybo Man. Cybo Man. Cybo Man. That's literally the name of this comic book character that Jeff Fahey, like, re- he, he, like, reads, and he loves it. He's like, that's his, like, favorite superhero or whatever, and he's like, I can't read the words, but, uh, but I look at the pictures, and, uh, I know what he's doing. So this fucking chimp is dressed up like RoboCop, and he, like, teams up with Jeff Fahey for a hot second. Well, not before he almost blows Jeff Fahey's fucking head off with the pistol he stole. Oh, that's right, he's still this fucking monkey has a fucking revolver and he's a dead eye <laughs> well because you come to find out you know as uh you know job and the the chimp are fucking bonding it cuts back to larry back at the facility like freaking out because he gets a phone call that it escaped and they're like larry it really killed a man for real and he's like <laughs> sweating fucking bullets over this that's right that's right like uh, joe was explaining he takes the chimp into his shack and and uh, you you kind of play up this little religious uh, angle where, you know, Job's telling the chimp, like, you're safe here, you know, th- look at that church, God lives there. And it's, you know, it's, for lack of a better term, it's a bit of a touching moment between these two characters. And then it cuts directly to the inside of the church, and you get this shit heel fucking priest, Father Francis, who's just, like, spraying bugs uh, spray all over the altar, saying, where the hell's Job? Yeah. What do I pay him for? Wow, that scene is fucking miles away from this opening sequence for me. Yeah, so RoboChimp's like, I need your strawberries, your clothes, and your shack to hide me from the fucking man. So Job, like, this is where he introduces himself to the monkey. Listen to what the fuck I'm saying here, okay? So this, so this, 
<laughs> this monkey is just like RoboCop sitting on his like piss cot. And Jeff Fahey is just like, <laughs> oh, you, you must be Cyborg Man. I'm Lawnmower Man. That's what they call me because I fix things or something. And I mow lawns. Yeah. Meanwhile, the monkey's literally, like, fucking trying to look out, like, the side of the window around the curtains for anybody coming after him. I am, I, 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 I can't believe how much of this I've never seen. Yeah, and it's fucking batshit. It's batshit. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. Oh, yeah. Like, there, there, are, there are characters who meet in this scene that, from my experience, didn't meet until, like, halfway through the movie. Or never meet, period. Like, in my in my cut, Angelo and uh, Father McKean never share a scene together. They only share this one. <laughs> so the Father McKean, he, he's looking for Job. So he, he comes out to his shack and he's, you know, kicking up dirt and, you know, fucking complaining. Ah, where is he? And he hears the monkey. So he, he fucking, he sticks his head in, like, looking in through the window. And he, like, fucking runs off like a little ninny hammer and he calls the cops. And it, we, it like cuts back to Umbrella Corporation, and the and the guy's like, "Oh, uh, there's a there's a there's a report of a weird creature uh, on the premises by the church." That's it. Let's go. So they all fucking load up. Now they have like they bring the fucking National Guard with them. For God's sakes, they got so many soldiers. Yeah, why are there so many armed people in this board meeting? It seems, dude. They're they're just standing there. They're just like armed guards. <laughs> they all have AR-15. <laughs> fucking blue shirts man and uh so they all <laughs> so they all surround this fucking shack and pierce brosnan shows up he's like wait 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 and then he pulls out a cigarette for whatever reason and he's like i i can talk him down i can uh, job job the lawnmower man shit i know job the lawnmower man i'm like what the fuck he's like a local celebrity or some shit <laughs> the universe converges in this small shack yeah but like fucking pierce brosnan's character says that he's like Job, Job Smith? Oh, the lawnmower man? Yeah, he cuts my fucking grass. I know him. He's got my monkey in there? Let me talk them down. Don't shoot them. I, I don't know, man. Like, I was kind of on Pierce Bronson's side with all this. I was like, I hope he fucking is able to solve this without violence. No, I kind of love this, and I'm pissed I didn't see it. I know, but, like, it's just so fucking ludicrous, man. Like, when you actually see it. It is literally like the end of yesterday's Target, where they have all the guns pointed at that fucking house, and Roland steps out. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> because well, because Job's like, oh, you're not going to hurt us, are you, Pierce Brosnan? He's like, no, you, the monkey's my friend, and you're my friend. You cut my grass, remember? And he's like, yep, I know you, Angelo Vitani, or whatever the fuck your name is. <laughs> and so he's like, all right, we're coming out. So he gra- so Jeff A, he grabs the, the Cybo monkey and Mr. Cybo. Or Cybo Man, excuse me. Yeah, you better get it right, Joe. Get it right or pay the price, because he's about to. So he, they fucking... <laughs> they, they come out of the door. Oh, man, I felt so bad. Dude, Connor, I can't believe you didn't see this. Like, you need to just go look this up. So he comes out with the fucking monkey, and everything's fine, and then all of a sudden, the monkey just goes fucking ape shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have... Okay. The monkey is holding the revolver? Well, yeah, yeah, and they, they start cocking their guns when they see that, and I guess based on this training he went through, he just freaks, and he starts running away, and of course, then they're just like, ah, oh, fuck it. Yeah. And basically, when he goes to run away, Dr. Angelo actually freaks out. He's like, no, don't shoot him, don't shoot him! Because he's like his prized fucking possession. Like, that's he's been working on this monkey for who knows how long. The uh, Real quick, the reason that he befriends Job, the monkey befriends Job, is because he, like assesses Job's eyes and, like, sees the innocence in them because he's a simple jack or whatever. So that's, like, a thing that just doesn't get brought up again. It Well, when he's making his fucking memoir, when Pierce Brosnan is making his fucking memoirs, he mentions it. But anyway, the monkey's got the fucking revolver, and he and the guy's like, ah, oh, he, oh, he's, he's going to shoot somebody, and the fucking ape has, like, a crazy, like, uh... You know, he has, like, a mental breakdown because of this fucking uh, Serum 5 or whatever the fuck it's called. And he, like, climbs up the fucking roof on the roof and, like, tries to jump on a tree and get away. And these fucking dudes light this monkey the fuck up. They shoot the shit out of this fucking ape. And uh, he just, this fucking puppet falls out of the tree and, like, hits the shed and then falls on the ground. And Jeff Fahey just starts screaming. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so angry I didn't see any of this. I'm sorry, but this- What the fuck? 
it's so much to explain, but like when you see it, your fucking jaw just drops. I don't, I don't know, dude. It was it was fucking hilarious. This, I, oh my god, this is like a totally different film. Well, then after this all goes down, Larry, of course, is distraught. Uh, you know, Job is inconsolable, and and the fucking father Francis McKean, he he goes up to him and he's like, ah, oh, look what you did now. Job's gonna be, be you know, uh, he's he's terrified, he's mortified by this, he's gonna be, you know, fucked up because of this. And they're just like, well, you know, what, you know, whatever. We can't do anything about it. Just don't tell anybody. The priest smacks the shit out of Job at first, like he did something wrong. Like he's like, you're a harbor and a fucking cyber monkey. That's against God's will or whatever. And yeah, and then that fucking other dude's like hey we'll we'll put a big check we're putting a, a bunch of giant checks into the church's pocket throughout this entire movie to just to keep shit quiet oh yeah and like there's something to be said about that oh yeah for sure that might explain a line that comes up later on because for me there, there's no context for that line when it meant it's mentioned i just assumed that job had a job that he was getting paid for by this man but apparently not so yeah so umbrella pays off the church to keep the fucking monkey business quiet that was a dad joke level pun you just <laughs> <laughs> i didn't mean it to be fucking monkey business <laughs> we go from this horrid fucking scene to thou now f the father's got Job in his fucking little shack, and he and he's basically telling him, "You're not gonna say anything, are you, Job?" He's like, "No, I'm not gonna say anything." He's like, "Well, you know what we gotta do," and he pulls this fucking switch out, this leather belt, and he starts beating the shit out of him. He's flogging Job. Yeah, he's like, he's like, "What's the best punishment from God you can get?" And he points to the fucking belt, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. I was like, this fucking old man just likes to beat on this poor fucking uh, mentally disabled guy, you know? Like, what the fuck? Well, not to mention, then he also makes him do like a hundred Hail Marys. Yeah, he fucking counts it on a goddamn chalkboard. Uh, this is the first of many characters who despise Job for basically no reason. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of just like hating this dude for no reason. It's a fucking disgrace. Well, it, it cuts to, uh, you know, while this is going down this hard, you know, one hard scene after another, you cut to fucking uh, Angelo doing his fucking best Jeff Goldblum from Jurassic Park impression. Man, I gotta tell you, I know I didn't see this audio diary, but when he does his audio diaries, it's fucking funny every time because he's like, all right, yeah, do uh, log recording. Ah, damn it all to hell! And just like leaps into an emotional outburst. Like, <laughs> But he's always got his shirt open or he's sweating up a storm fucking working out. Oh, yeah, he's fucking down in Bushmills and fucking drinking Bill, D or fucking smoking Bill Durham's. He's, he's, he's all over it, man. Um, I'm assuming this is where you guys said he's lamenting the monkey's death because this happens in my cut in a single sentence. The chimp's dead. Damn, that's it. Yeah, that's, yep, that's pretty much what happens. I think he's also just kind of freaked out by everything that went down. Like, not only the, this experiment that, like Joe said, he's been working on for, for all we know, years, but also it was like in the middle of town and this other dude got totally fucking, you know, freaked out by it. Yeah. And here's the thing. In the theatrical cut, there's a lot of scenes where Angelo is like, you don't know what I'm going through. Like, this is so hard and blah, blah, blah. And he says all this stuff. And I'm like, it, like, th without this scene, none of that has the extra context for it to make a whole lot of sense. Any weight. Yeah, it has no weight to it. Like, so when his wife comes in, she's like, take me to the city. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, you don't know what I'm going through. I'm like, you're going through nothing in the theatrical cut. <laughs> It's also still stupid, you know? <laughs> he's like, he's like, I've been working forever on this fucking monkey, and they just shot him dead. And it's like, that's what my problem is. Now what do I do? I need a human test subject, but I don't want to make a weapon, but I want to make a... And she's still like, take me to the city! <laughs> You don't understand my problems, Vera, or whatever her fucking name is. Caroline, I believe. Who could give a shit? <laughs> yeah, she's in, like, three or four scenes that, you know. She becomes prominent for, like, five minutes at the end, and it's like, what the fuck? Why? Oh, does she? <laughs> Not in, not, not in my cut. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, it's a really fucked up scene, honestly. It's a pretty fucked up scene and doesn't make any sense. So fucking Jeffrey Lewis shows up. Uh, he's, he's playing Terry McKean. And why the fuck? Okay, so this guy, he owns the, the, the landscaping business that he lets Job, um, you know, cut the grass for her. that's how he becomes the lawn you know that's that's who he is that's how he's the lawnmower man because he helps this guy now this guy terry is the brother of the priest why the fuck does terry have an irish accent and the priest does not yeah terry sounds like he just got off the fucking boat yeah 
and Father McKean has no sign of an accent whatsoever, and they both look like they're relatively the same age. There are a couple scenes where his accent comes out, but it just seems like he's kind of, like, mostly hiding it. Yeah. The other guy has the full accent, though, for sure, Terry. Terry's accent's like, ah, sha, 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 like that kind of Irish. So then he pulls up, and he's like... Oh, r- real quick, real quick. I want to, ex- uh, in my cut, the uh, reason that Job is flogged is because he didn't do his chores, which leads to the ants on the altar, and that's why Father McKean uh, flogs him for not doing his chores. It has nothing to do with a monkey. Well, that's originally why he goes out <laughs> to the shack, because of the ants. But then we get Cybo Man in the fucking shack. After Job does all of his ha- Hail Marys, he's, like, work- He's like super technical. He, he can, like, fix anything and, like, build anything, right? He's, like, an idiot savant, kind of. He's building, like, a fucking, like, monster truck lawnmower. This lawnmower is something that Vin Diesel would drive in a Fast and Furious movie, okay? <laughs> it's called Big Red. And you know what I called it? What? I called it Kane. <laughs> It's a big red machine, man. Come on. You son of a bitch. And he did some, like, black stripes on it, man. Yeah, he's working on big red, and this he uses this monstrosity to cut people's lawns with, and it's like, if you showed up to my house with that thing, I'd be like, look, you're not shaving my my lawn bald, okay? Go somewhere else with that fucking thing. It looks like it's got, like, fucking, like, giant exhaust pipes on it. It's like the hot rod of fucking lawnmowers, right? And it's got a, it's got a blade like those old-timey, non-motorized uh, lawnmowers that just spin. Yeah, and there's no fucking... So it's a motorized version of that, and then there's no fucking, like, guard on the front. It's just all open. Yeah, it's just open. It's a, it's a fucking safety hazard. Oh, yeah. You're fucking losing a finger on that for sure. So then we cut back to Umbrella Labs, and, like, they're having... Like, Pierce Brosnan's now, like, like, fuck you, I'm off the project. You killed my monkey, and blah, blah, blah. Like, you don't understand, like... We're going to use, you know, these virtual reality and gyroscopes of the future, and they're going to open communication to, you know, everybody in the world, and uh, hence the history of the internet is what this film is. Yeah, actually, this movie is kind of on point in, in some regards to, like, where this all, all, most of this technology went. Yeah, and what, but where this goes towards the end of the film really kind of makes sense Yeah, uh, for that argument so he's like yeah you know he's like ah, blah 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 you don't understand what you're throwing away and we need human test subjects and you know i'm not making a weapon and i'm gonna make you know the next evolution in in human whatever communication and intelligence and blah 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 and they're like fuck you we're getting william birkin to make the fucking g-virus because <laughs> this shit ain't fucking working out dude so he just fucking storms off and leaves he's like oh what are you gonna kill me because i know what i know and they're like well no not really we're not that kind of company. <laughs> and then he just and then he just leaves and goes home and gets drunk. That's what he does. We we get a little bit of uh, more character building with Job and Terry. They they go to the fucking local gas station where this real tool bag fucking Jake. Oh my god! This edge lord motherfucker. Yeah, smoking his cigarette next to the fucking gas. And Job's just like, ah, that's dangerous. And he's like, fucking. And he's and he's fucking right. <laughs> yeah, and he's like just about to punch Job in the fucking face over it. Yeah, Job's like, hey, don't do that. That's a safety hazard for everybody here. And Jake's like, what retard? Fuck you. Yeah, and he spits his fucking cigarette right at him while he's pumping the gas. Like he's a real jerk off. And it's his gas station. He fucking owns it. Like with his dad. Yeah, it's my dad's gas station. Yeah. Was well, your dad dead? You know, did he get bit by a fucking snake? <laughs> Ring my bell there, fucking Job. Ring it, baby. Oh, fuck you. God damn it. <laughs> I forgot about that movie. So so he's pumping the gas, and uh, some some fucking greaseball motherfucking uh, house salesman pulls up, and he's like, he's like, hey, y'all hear about what happened at the church? And he's like, no, what the fuck happened at the church? And then fucking... You know, Patrick O'Brien or whatever the fuck his name is is like, oh, yo, Job, what happened at the church there, boy? And he's like, nothing. And he's like, oh, come on now. I know that you're, you're working at the church. You know what you're talking about. What what happened there? And he's like, there was an animal and they killed it. And he's like, who, who, who killed him? And he's like, Cybo Man. They killed Cybo Man. Funny aside, the first episode of season one took place in Ireland. There's a lot of Irish accents in this <laughs> film. There's one, but it's, uh, you know, it's... Prominent? How could you not? It's prominent. Yeah. 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 Yes. Anyway. Anyway, Jeff Fahey's like, 
they killed Cybo Man. And he's like, ah, what are you talking about, you fucking asshole? Cybo, the comic book guy? You're a fucking idiot. Yeah. And then that's the scene. That's pretty much it. And then and then you get, uh, you, you meet the fucking director over at Umbrella. He's talking to Tim's. H- Hank from Breaking Bad with a very strange accent. Who I did not recognize until like an hour and a half later into the film. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he, he's, he says, and he talks like this to his underlings for some reason. I'm the director, and this is what you're going to do. Okay, what you're going to do. Is... Sometimes he pauses in his sentences and kind of purrs. <laughs> For some reason, this fucking screen, every time they show him on the screen, like, whatever his camera is from his character's perspective, it's like, it's zoomed in all the way into, like, the bottom half of his chin and his forehead. It's like Max Headroom. He's fucking father. And he's like, get me the job or whatever. Get me the thing. Hmm. We need to accelerate to human subjects. Give me Pierce Brosnan's sexy hairy chest and his earring. Speaking of uh, Pierce Bronson, you get this uh, scene of him in the basement fucking in the VR machine, and he's, like, freaking out. He's <laughs> loving life. <laughs> what the fuck? He's fucking flying through a nerds commercial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this when his wife comes in? She's, like, falling, floating, flying. What's next? Fucking? No, Capri Sun. <laughs> Yeah, that that this is the scene. She's like, oh, you said you were going to take me out. And he's like, well, and he's like trying to like fuck her right there. And she's like, um, I, I want to go out. And he's like, oh, well, I don't. He's like, I'm trying to make a deal with fucking Pornhub. What's the matter with you? It's 2019. VR's in. Uh, apparently, you guys also had another shot of uh, Larry uh, drinking himself stupid in the basement. Not present in my cut. Yeah. Pierce Brosnan like puts the moves on his wife and he just kind of talks his way out of it because he's Pierce Brosnan. He's just like, he's like, hey, I'm really sexy, and I'm, I'm kind of British, sort of, but I have an American-British accent, and I'm handsome, and I look like one of the members of Wham! What do you think? And she's just like, don't you want to touch me? <laughs> Take me on. Take on me. Well, she, she fucking storms off, and then he's like sitting there thinking, oh, I need a human uh, test subject, and he sees Job walk by his fucking <laughs> yeah. basement window, and he's like, the light bulb goes off. That's the best light bulb scene. He's just like, ah. He's such a fucking asshole for this, too, because honestly, none of the bad shit that happens in this movie would happen no. if, if he didn't do this. By the way, he's wasted. He drank a whole bottle of Bushmills scotch. He is shit hammered in your cut, apparently. Yeah, and he's like, you know what I think I'll do? I'll put the fucking stupid idiot, man. I'm gonna tempt him with video games and make him smarter. Hey, Job, have you ever played Wolfenstein? <laughs> Basically. Well, well, he goes out there to find... He goes out there to find Job, and then, like, never actually talks to him. He ends up talking to his fucking neighbor, and then the the dad comes home and runs this fucking kid Peter's bike over. Oh, yeah, well, because he has, like, a fight. Pierce Brosnan has a fight with his wife, and he, like, runs outside. And then fucking construction dude comes home, runs over the fucking bike, and he's like, God damn it, Billy, I told you not to put your fucking bike in your goddamn truck. Come here, you little shit. Come here, I'm gonna beat the piss out of you. Which he does constantly, but... There isn't a bruise on this kid, like, throughout the whole film. No, and it looks like this dad's, like, this dad's nightly routine is to come home and just, like, smack the fuck out of his kid. Yeah, like, that's what he does. There's, like, three scenes where you just hear, like, Peter! (laughs) Every time we see Peter, he's getting his ass kicked. Except when he's, like, reading comic books with Job down at the fucking diner or whatever. Pierce Brosnan's just like, uh, you know, oh, you want to be smarter, Job? You want to play my, you, you want to be part of my experiment? I, I mean, game? You want to play a game in my basement? And he's like, yep, sure I do. So then they, then he starts doing that. So he starts going into Pierce Brosnan's basement and like fucking around with these, um, uh, simple like tests that, that, that he, he's running like this gamut of tests that Pierce Brosnan wants him to do to see if he's, you know, adequate to, 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 for this treatment or whatever. So there's this scene, uh, I don't I don't know if this is in the theatrical cut so this might be what you're talking about connor because pierce brosnan calls fa- the priest or whatever father whatever M- mckean and he's like he's like hey i'm doing some remodeling work at my home um can i borrow job for a spell doesn't happen and he doesn't happen <laughs> yeah he's basically <laughs> he's like can i borrow job for a spell and he's like Oh, I don't know about that, Pierce Brosnan. In my cut, he goes outside to Job and talks to him like a child predator and is like, come into my basement, Job. Well, he does that too. <laughs> but this is like before that. And he's like, he's like, yeah. He's like, no, Job, um, 
Joe works for the church, and he, you know, I gotta, I gotta talk to my brother because, uh, you know, he does the lawn mowing, you know, part time or whatever. And he's like, "How about I pay the church? How about I make a donation to the church? You know, worth it? I gotta, I have to write it off for my taxes, you know." And he's like, "Oh." Gotcha. Well, let, I don't see what I could do there. All right? You got the fucking retard for the day. Here you go. Bingo. Church funds. Buying some new pews. <laughs> Does not happen in my cut at all. Yeah, so that's basically what happens. And then he fucking... And then Pierce Brosnan takes Job into the basement, runs him through, like, a, a, a gamut of tests, um, and then from there, we're fuck, he, like, throws him right into, like, a virtual reality game with, like, Peter, the last action hero kid from next door. These games are fucking terrifying. It looks like Reboot. Yes, he, totally. Well, you fucking took my joke for the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, pretty much the rest of the movie looks like Reboot. Anything in VR, let's be fair. So he, uh, so Pierce Brosnan, he, really, it's, it's just a test for Job to see, like, how far along he is, just to assess him. And then he's like, all right, uh, hey, Peter, why don't you go upstairs and get us all some drinks? And he's like, come here, Joe. I want to, I want to show you something. And he's like, he's like, I'm going to give you a shot. And he's like, a shot, a shot of what? And he's like, it's, uh, you know, vitamins or whatever. He opens the fucking refrigerator and there's like Coors Light and then just like a little vial. And he fucking sticks it in this fucking gun and he sh- and he fucking shoots a fucking Las Plagas into this motherfucker's neck. Yeah. And Joe was like, shots hurt. And he's like, this won't hurt. And he sticks him and Joe goes, ah! <laughs> And he's like, that didn't hurt. Well, then you get you get this, like, montage scene of, uh, we kind of joked about it earlier, where Pierce Bronson is doing this, like, audio recording. And it's like, the whole time he's doing this recording, he's, like, in workout gear, like, yeah. fucking, like, doing fucking, you know, sit-ups and jogging and shit. And then he's like, oh, it's been a month, and Job's already progressed uh, rapidly. What is it? It's a hot dog. Like, that's what I'm thinking about when I'm seeing this fucking montage. So he finally starts, like, doing, like, advanced things on Job. And the way that this... Okay. Ex- let me know if I'm explaining this right. He puts Job in a chair. And he puts a fucking virtual boy on his face. He shoots him up with a fucking G-virus. And then he fucking goes to the computer and puts on, like, virtual reality gloves. And attaches something virtually to his... Cerebellum? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the the virtual reality stuff in this movie is so ambiguous, but it, it almost like it looks back at you and goes like, it just works that way, okay? Shut up. What Pierce Brosnan is doing in this scene is manipulating Job's brain via video with his hands. It's fucking weird. Basically, for the people listening, it's the same as if you clicked an icon on your desktop and dragged it to the recycling bin. That's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. It's it's almost like, and I don't know, I could be reaching on this one, but like, you know, he uses the serum on Job, and that is the, the thing that gets his brain moving. And then he goes in the VR, and he's like touching synapses on Job's brain to get them to respond. Yeah, there's a weird implication that virtual reality in this universe can directly, directly affect the physical world, and vice versa. Bingo. Dino DNA. I think that's what it is, only because as he progresses through this treatment, Job starts having seizures, and then he's kind of like, whoa, like, I still want to continue with this research, but maybe I'm going too fast. Yeah, but he's, like, flashing occult symbols really quickly at him for whatever reason. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, I don't know. He was, like, he was like hitting him with, like, fucking Illuminati yeah. symbols and shit like that, and it's like, this will make you smarter. Bam, 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 bam. It's almost like Job opened up the virtual Lament configuration. Well, it's this weird thing where I'm like, okay, wait, is there, like, some kind of, like... I, okay, I'm a big fan of like when they when they merge like the occult and like technology together, like like evil speak and stuff like that. That's what I thought was going on here, and I'm <laughs> I'm still not convinced that it's not. I think it is, but they don't explicitly say it, but they totally show it. I don't know. It, it's weird as hell. Like I I feel like there was a disconnect between the people that were on set making this movie and the people that were in the post production team, but. I, I don't know. That, maybe I'm reaching for straws on that one. Beats me. Anyway, Job starts to get smarter, and he's, like, back at his shack, and the priest comes in. He's like, he's like, what are you doing? You've been hanging out with that fucking, that doctor man, haven't you? T- you've been learning science shit. Is this when he walks in and Job is staring at himself in the mirror? Oh, yeah. He's a fucking physical specimen. Oh, my God. This is my favorite scene in the fucking movie. He's a sexy guy, man. Yeah, Jeff A., he's looking at himself, and he's like, I'm shredded. And then the priest walks in, and he's like... Like, he's like, oh, look at your perverted body in the mirror, blah, 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 blah. And then, like, he goes to, like, 
I can't remember how this, this happens, but he goes to chastise Job, and Job just turns around and goes like, he's like, you can't just barge in here, I live here, okay? I pay my rent, I want to catch my paycheck so I can go get my comic books. Brah. You know why you don't know how it happened, Connor? Because you you missed part of the scene that they cut out. Oh, yeah. Where he grabs the fucking belt off the wall, and he goes to hit him with it. Oh, that's right. He goes to hit him, and he grabs his hand, and goes, you shouldn't hit people. And then he has this hilarious, like, he stands up to the priest, but it's the most childish, like, he's like, he's like, oh, my paycheck, so I can get some comic books. Not even. He's like, he's like, I want to buy, I'm going to go buy my own clothes, too. I'm going to buy cowboy boots, and there's nothing you could do about it. <laughs> and then he goes to hit him with the belt. He's like, cowboy boots, blasphemer. There's an interesting thing happening, though, in this movie as it progresses, as, as Job gets smarter, where... Jeff Fahey, you know, say what you will about this performance, but he he does this very subtle thing up to a, a to a specific point in the movie where it just totally like finger snap changes, where he's he's slowly changing the way he's speaking as this character. Everything around Job, I would say, is the better parts of this movie. Yeah, well, Jeff Fahey's just a really good actor, and that's that's that. Um. And he does it very well, like for for this part. And so, uh, yeah, Job uh, Job goes <laughs> Job goes and buys a cosplay a, a, a rancher cosplay outfit. <laughs> he gets a fucking a collar button down and like some fucking slim fitting jeans. Oh my god! And his fucking cowboy boots. <laughs> and then the fucking horny neighbor fucking starts checking him out, and she wants a piece. Holy shit! The thirsty fucking neighbor. Well, you get this scene too, you know, like you guys just said, where she's at this gas station at Jake's gas gas station and he's like hitting on this woman and uh the camera zooms in and she's like clearly looking at job's ass in the fucking side mirror oh yeah he's filling up his gas tank and he's bent over and she's checking out his ass in her side view mirror uh gets out and he's like who are you he's like i'm Job the lawnmower man she's like you're not Job the lawnmower man he is not that not that cute and then fucking jake comes out and just basically was like <laughs> and embarrasses himself hey uh, i gave you free wiper fuel it fluid or whatever yeah, yeah, i for free because my dad owns the place what do you say another thing a note for people that haven't seen this film or the previously mentioned Tropic Thunder. In the beginning of this movie, the first, at least in the director's cut, third of the movie, Job wears, like, real basic, like, long sleeve t-shirt uh, with these, these fucking overalls. And then he buys these cowboy clothes, but he also changes his hairstyle. Before, his hairstyle's, like, real, like... Messy. Yeah, messy, just kind of whatever, and now he has it slicked back. He looks like Yahoo Serious. He looks like a cast member of all that, like one of the older ones. Oh, my God. <laughs> like the fucking giant-ass overalls and, sh and fucking shirts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it should be noted that in Simple J in Tropic Thunder, Simple Jack is dressed exactly the same. Now he's fucking walking around like uh, Walker, Texas Ranger. Well, the, yeah, Jake, Jake grabs fucking Terry and throws him, and then he fucking decks uh, Job and Job, for the first time in the film, just looks like he's out for blood. I, I actually love that, too, because, like, he spins around, and Jeff Fahey, Jeff Fahey's got these big fucking blue eyes, um, turns around and uses them like lasers and just stares a hole in this guy, uh, and, and Jake backs down, and at some point, Jake and Terry get into it over the neighbor, because the, Terry's like, oh, she definitely wants to fuck Job until the color leaves his eyes, I tell you that much. <laughs> She's like, I tell ya, she's very thirsty for Job, and Jake's like, no, she's not. Don't you ever call her a whore, man, and he's like, she's like, a whore's do it for money. We cut to Jeff Fahey and Pierce Brosnan driving in a car, going to fucking Umbrella Labs. And, and, and Jeff Fahey is explaining how, he's like, oh, people are starting to notice that I'm different. Because earlier in the film, they had, like, an agreement where Pierce Brosnan was like, hey, don't tell people about this, because I'm not really supposed to be doing it. Well, yeah, he's like, it's our secret, but it's like, it, the way way he explains it to Jeff is as if Jeff's like a child like it's just gonna be our little secret okay like don't tell anybody right I'll let you play the video games if you don't say anything and at this point in the film you've already seen Job obviously like we talked about you know he changed his whole look yeah he's reading a fucking like algebra textbook at one point yeah he's talking he's talking to Pierce Brosnan and like you you, you see here like him really to start to make uh his leaps of like um intelligence because he's like he's like Oh, so I'm like the monkey, right? And Pierce Brown is like, well, no. And he's like, well, we're going to this lab. Like, are they going to kill me like they killed the monkey? And he's like, uh, no, look, uh, the monkey was a mistake. And he's like, yeah, okay, I, I guess so. Also, of no, I, I don't remember if it's said now or earlier in the film, but Pierce Bronson made a point to use a different serum that wasn't as dangerous 
uh, because the serum that you guys were talking about earlier, the number five that the monkey was on, was what caused him to become so aggressive. And he, he makes a comment at one point in the film that two other chimps were on the same serum and they tore each other apart. So he's super against using this other serum. Yeah, well, because it makes him like totally, completely unstable and aggressive. Um, and it's specifically formulated for chimpanzees. So this new formula, he kind of have cracked. He's kind of cracked the code again. Like if that was the T virus, is the G virus. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they go to Umbrella, and then they when these motherfuckers are walking down these hallways, they look like Wham. Like Jeff <laughs> he looks like George Michael, and Pierce Brosnan is just the other half of Wham. I don't even know that fucking guy's name. Pierce Brosnan and George Michael. Yeah, like Pierce Brosnan's in his fucking loose fitting clothes, and his hair's a mess, and he's got his glasses on, and he's probably got a cigarette in his hand. Like Jeff he's in his fucking tight ass jeans. Like <laughs> these two handsome motherfuckers walking down this hallway. Is is this where the uh, the first gyroscope sequence happens? Yeah, he throws him right in the fucking gyroscope, and they get into their Tron uniforms. Yeah, yes, I my I was looking at the word Tron in my notes. <laughs> I mean, how could you not? Because it, it's a combination of they they basically put these bodysuits on that are super reminiscent of the Tron suits, like when they're in the in the in Tron. Yeah, I just put Tron light in my notes. <laughs> yeah, they have like the fucking LED piping in it and everything. By the way, the outside of this fucking Umbrella Laboratory looks like the Power Rangers fucking command center. <sighs> oh my god, it does. It really does. Every time I saw it, I need a simple man with attitude. Ay 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 ay. Give him number five. <laughs> he he pretty much becomes Zordon later. Yeah, he does. Oh my god. I am God here. <laughs> so uh, the virtual reality sequences this movie are fucking comical because, like, if I sh- if you showed someone these out of context, they would just go. Oh, that was cool. What the fuck was that about? I have no idea what that was. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say that if I saw this in a theater, I think it would be probably kind of wild. Yeah, maybe in 92. Yeah. No, I, I think people at the time probably saw it in theaters and went like, holy fuck. I mean, yeah, but like, you got to understand, Jurassic Park is out. Just came out. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, this looks like shit. Star Wars is out. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you know what else I want to just note real quick? Like, the film that I keep telling you guys about, uh, Virtuosity with Russell Crowe and... um, Same director, right? I don't know. Is it? I think it is. Is it really? We should do that one with Russell Crowe and Denzel Washington. Anyway, sorry. May I continue? So these virtual reality sequences, I can't remember what this one consists of, but it's it's mostly just, like, it's them two hovering in this kind of weird, colorful void, and, like, Angelo just keeps, like... In virtual, in cyberspace, it's like throwing random shit at Job for him to absorb, more or less. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's like fucking Doctor Strange, and like all the symbols he's like making with his hands and just like throwing them into his fucking brain. Like, that's yeah. what's happening. And Job's like, Job's like, ah, ah, I'm getting too smart too fast. And so this is supposed to make Job smarter. I don't know how, but it does. Beats me. It makes him want to take his shirt off, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> He's cutting his fucking grass with no shirt on. Certainly does. It cut. Yeah, it cuts the next scene, and he's just mowing the lawn with his shirt off. And then, like, there's fucking thirsty neighbor. And, oh, this can't he hear voices now? Uh, he you hear like inklings of it, and he's like, "What?" Yeah, he's starting to get like he's starting to maybe possibly hear people's thoughts, and like it, it's important because he thinks he hears a woman's voice. Looks over, and like the fucking thirsty neighbor is upstairs in practically nothing. With a tray of lemonade in her hands, just, like, biting her lips so hard it might as well come off. And then, like, Job stops for a second. She's like, come upstairs for some lemonade and sex. Yeah, and fucking McKean's like, go up there, boy. What are you, crazy? Go over there. Go get it. I have never seen a happier wingman in my life. He's like, what are you doing, Job? Put the lawnmower down and go up there and get fucked. <laughs> she needs a drink. Go get her. Go do it. <laughs> She's practically begging for it. He's like, uh, when you're done, can you bring me down a lemonade? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, if I was 10 years younger, I'll tell you what. Uh, so, yeah, so now uh, uh, Job can kind of, he, he's somewhat psychic, and then he goes upstairs, and uh, this woman fucking takes him around the world. Yep, and then we're back at the facility with Pierce, and uh, Pierce is like, look, I'm going to show, you're going to learn the history of the world. And he's like, okay, here you go, sit down. And, and his whole logic with this is that Job keeps having fucking seizures from the VR, and he's like, I, I, I need to cool off on this. I don't want this guy to die on me. Yeah. Oh, and at some point in between this, because uh, Tim's is kind of like the liaison for Pierce Brosnan and uh, Virtual Space Industries, who's like, he's kind of aware that this human subject is, ha- that human testing is happening. He's like, yeah, good, keep going. And he's kind of keeping it quiet for a minute. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll dig. So he 
so Pierce is like she's teaching him the history of the world or whatever, and he's like he's like okay, uh, I Pierce Bar- Barraza is basically like I want to see how fast you could learn or what you're learning. He, you know, he's basically running another test on him, and he's like I'm gonna play another game. This is great. So he hooks him up to a different device. It's not the VR thing. It's like this little. He, it looks like a fucking scanner from Dragon Ball Z. He basically sets him up like Lulu Dallas multipass. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He puts him in his chair, and so like Job's like doing like weird chess games, and like he's 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 like getting he's getting history lessons, but he's getting them he's absorbing them in a matter of seconds. He's reading them like fucking Johnny Five, dude. Yeah. yeah. And Pierce Brosnan comes back, and he's like he's like. What are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm done. He's like, what do you mean you're done? There's fuck. That's fucking 19 hours of programming that I've done for you. No, not 19. A hundred. Oh, a hundred? I thought he said 19. Jesus. He's like, that's impossible. He's like, well, I finished it in two minutes. Yeah. And, and Pierce Bronson's like, the look on his face is nothing but horror because he's just like, you you can't be doing this this fast. And even if you could, you could never process it. And Job, you know, at this point, Job is just loses the, the the his dialect. He's just talking normal at this point. Oh yeah, yeah. And the, like Job says it very matter of factly. He's like, yeah. He's like, I uh, I'm done. Like I finished. What's next? And again, there's like that social commentary here where he's like, he's like, oh my god. Like I had no idea. You know, human beings were like so complicated and like so many great men and women. But like all that pain or whatever. So it's basically like, you know, you know, he sees the history of the world and like all the wars and shit. And he's like, that's really awful. And he's basically like Ultron. You know what I mean? Like, that's what we're doing here. I had that thought while watching this. It's like one of those things where it's like, why would like if I'm a higher power, why would I let you all just keep killing yourselves? I'm just going to exterminate you all and start over, basically. Yeah, I'm going to shake the etch sketch clean. Yeah, I mean, that's the logical end point. But yeah, Pierce Bronson is just freaked because not, not only did he get that done so fast, but too, it's like you're not even taking the time to process this job. And he's like, oh, I, I, I process it fast. So, you know, if it's not fast, I don't you know, I can't do it. Right. And he he like needs to be constantly stimulated now too. like he he's just like a and uh, Pierce Brosnan even says that he's like he's like a spongy sucking up all the stuff I'm sending him and now like he processes things so quickly that Pierce wasn't doing it fast enough and that's why he was getting seizures yeah at some point he's also states that like he doesn't even need to uh like with the music thing, I'm not sure when it happens for you guys. I think it happens sooner for me. It happens right here. Okay, yeah, he's listened to music, and he only needs to listen to about 10 seconds of it, and then his brain fills in the rest. Yeah, or he's bored of it, or a little bit of both. Because it's just, it's just, a, it's a, it's, a, it's a basically, it's like a data sequence to him. Like, he just fills in the blanks. Pierce Bronson basically wants to just, you know, stop all tests and just really slow everything down, and he's talking to Tim's about it. I don't know if it's here or a little bit later in the film, but, you know, Tim's is like, you know, the director... They they need to, they need these results now and Pierce Bronson is just basically no I need to I need to fucking hammer this out it's not perfected there's so many variables uh, I, I don't feel comfortable with that and then it's the the scene after that conversation or a little a little bit soon after you see Tim's basically like he talks to the director and the director's like we need this fucking now and then Tim's goes into the freezer in the lab and switches. Uh, the the current blend of the serum out with the number five. Yeah, and they keep trying to get fucking Pierce to go to Washington to, like, pitch this to the director. While this is all going down with the serum getting switched and whatnot, Job's driving in the car with the music, he has the boombox in the car, and he has Peter sitting there with him, like, switching the CDs out, like, every five seconds. And they, they go to the diner, and, uh, you know, he, he goes to Peter... Uh, oh, I got rid of all my comic books, you could have them all. And, and Peter's like, oh, thanks, Job! And then uh, he has, like, a fucking meltdown because he can't handle all the voices in his head. Like, he's looking around, and he he fucking, he almost goes fucking, uh, what do you call it, Phoenix. Because, like, he's looking around, and people are like, what, that guy's fucking crazy. He's looking at me weird or whatever. And he keeps hearing all these voices in his head. Right. So, So now he can read minds, right? So he's going around listening to people's thoughts or what have you. And he's asking Pierce Brosnan, he's like, "Why? what the fuck, what'd you do to me? And he's like, oh, th- you know, you're, this is too quick. Like, I don't know what's going on here or why this is happening now. Uh, like, what's going, like, I don't even know what's going on with you. Yeah, because I, I think, like, right after he has this uh, conversation with Pierce Bronson about him hearing everything is when that switch happens. Yeah. Uh, then fucking Weasel Guy implements the, 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 the Red Five or Chanel Number no. Five, whatever the fuck it's called. And then Job starts... Not only developing telekinesis now, but also 
a really bad temper problem. Like, like they dumped fucking roids in, like into his juice, and that's you know he's all fucked up. He's like he starts going crazy. Yeah, they do the uh, he puts the batch five into like the drugs and they go in, back into virtual reality. And Job has an absolute fucking freak out. Um, and yeah, he basically has like like he has brain swelling whilst this is happening. And um, Pierce Brosnan pulls him out, and Jeff Fahey delivers my favorite line of the movie is when he says, "I saw and felt God." Yeah, like it, he. he Everything's becoming all encompassing for him. So, like, he if he th- concentrates hard enough, he can like make things appear in reality, and he can augment reality and all kinds of crazy shit um, that he's learning how to do. He can essentially blend the virtual world and the, and the real world in weird ways. Yeah, right. And he ends up like taking the chick, the neighbor chick, and like he's like he's like fucking her and he's like oh you you really want to get kinky and he's like and they put then he puts her in the he takes her to the fucking umbrella lab and puts her in the gyroscope and they're like fucking in virtual reality and then he like it's weird yeah it's fucking weird and they like it's almost like um some kind of like from beyond shit where they're like melding into each other and kind of like a higher form of um intimacy and shit like that like they're becoming one another it's really weird and then her virtual reality avatar gets stuck in goo. virtual reality goo, and then JF he's like, nothing can hurt you here, except my virtual splooge, and then turns into a giant fucking horrifying monster and yeah, starts what the to, fuck was that I don't about? know, spit on her or something, and then like, the experience is so intense that she basically becomes a vegetable. Oh yeah, he fucking, he, uh, he lobotomizes her. Well, what was that? That was about him losing grip on his sanity, Sean. Like he's, it's, it's from, it's from Chanel number no. five giving him the fucking crazy, you know, the, the craziness that comes along with it. Cause it's not even meant for fucking humans. So in tandem with Pierce Brosnan's fucking cocktail, you know, he's, right. he's like super crazy, psychic telekinesis motherfucker. And now he's batshit insane. You know, after this happens, you know, Joe freaks the fuck out. Cause he just basically, you know, he didn't kill his girlfriend, but he might as well have. And, uh, you know, Angelo, you know, the next morning or a few days later comes to the lab and uh, Jeff Fahey's just sitting there. They both look freaked out for different reasons. Jeff Fahey looks freaked out because he's so fucking smart. And Pierce Bronson looks freaked out because Jeff Fahey is so freaking smart. Yeah. And uh, Jeff Fahey is just basically lifts a fucking chair in the air with his mind. Yeah, and Sims, Sims sees this behind. He's kind of observing, but... Uh, neither Job nor uh, Angelo know he's there. Yeah, he proves to Pierce Brosnan he has uh, telekinesis, and then he basically this is where he this is where I was referencing before. He um he tells Pierce Brosnan that I not only am I smarter than you, but I'm in touch with parts of my brain that they aren't new parts of our brain. They're parts of our brain that we forgot how to use, and like these are what the alchemists and the miracle. Uh, makers and 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 all that kind of and like wizards and shit used to use to to manipulate reality, yeah. which is kind of cool thought. Yeah, and then that kind of ties back to like all the occult shit that he's been pumping in his brain, but it never comes to like fruition that way. I don't know, it's weird. You know, as you were just talking about how he's starting to lose his grip on reality, starting to go off the fucking deep end. Even Pierce Bronson's like, I think you're losing your grip on reality. I think you're you, you're having a psychotic break. And, and Job just like is just looks at him and starts getting into his fucking head, and you just watch as Pierce Bronson is just like in pain. Yeah, he's like gripping his face like fucking Michael Berryman in The Giver. I will make you slap yourself into oblivion, Angelo. <laughs> Basically, you have this weird, weird's the wrong one. You have this side quest, I'll call it, where <laughs> like Joe Joe is talking about how they keep trying to get Doctor Angelo to go to Washington. They want him to go to Washington. Wait, does he go to Washington in Connor's cut? He does, but it's a fucking brief ass visit. Oh man, here we go. Go ahead, Sean. So he goes to quote unquote Washington with uh, Tim's, but uh, he finds out he's actually going to this place called the Shop, and he starts flipping out. He's like, "Fuck you, Tim's. Fuck this. Get me out of here. I didn't agree to this." Hard cut to him in the meeting. And uh, he's he's talking to the fucking director and Tim's and a couple other black suits and basically explaining what he did with Job. And they're like, okay, this is great. Uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to produce this report and we're going to get going on this. And he's like, wait a minute. He's like, there's a lot of variables. I, I don't feel comfortable with this. This needs to be worked on longer. And they're just like, all right, uh, go back to your hotel. Wait, wait. The director's like, uh, yeah, so what about batch number five? And Pierce Brunson's like, what? 
And he's like, you fucking idiot. He's like, you fucking mixed batch number five in with my fucking research, you asshole. He's like, don't you know that's a, that's where the that's where Sean was talking about where, you know, the two the two chimpanzees like ripped each other apart. And he's like, you know, that wasn't even meant for humans. And now you mixed it in with what I'm doing. Like, do you realize what the fuck you just did? They're all like, no. <laughs> and while, while he's having this whole side quest, they keep they keep intersplicing like every every you know, once in a while, shots of Jay, Jeff Fahey going to this fucking lab. And he's like jonesing. He he fucking takes all the number five serums out of the fridge and injects himself with them. Dude. Every one of these vials. He shoots himself up like fucking crazy. Uh, and then he puts on his Tron suit because he's going to get ready for some, uh, <laughs> for some for some holy vengeance. Then we cut back to Washington or wherever the fuck we're supposed to be. And he's like in his, you know, Pierce is in his hotel, you know, Fucking, you get it. One for the ladies here. He comes out of the shower. He's got no shirt on and everything. Tim's comes into his room and he's like, and he's like, hey, uh, just wanted you to. He's like, hey, don't you ever knock? Yeah, yeah. He's like, what the fuck? And he's just basically like, Tim's just like, ah, they're gonna go get Job, so uh, whatever. And then um, he's like, yeah, of course they are. And Pierce looks out the window and the fucking the men in black are there to get him. And he's like, and me too. He fucking puts Tim's up against the wall and punches him in the face and then runs downstairs. I don't know if this part was in your uh, in the theatrical cut, but there's so he, so Pierce tries to get out of the building right without the Men in Black knowing where he's at, and he fucking goes uh, <laughs> down this down fucking part. I love this dude. He goes down into like the fucking basement, and the guy uh, one of them catches him with a gun, and he's like he's like, all right, you coming with us, Pierce Brosnan? And he's like, oh okay. This fucking bellboy walks out with a fucking champagne on a tray, and Pierce grabs it and cracks this dude in the fucking face with it. Oh, yeah. He hits him, and then he hits him, takes his gun, and then hands it to the bellhop and goes, yeah, you know, keep an eye on him. And the bellhop's like, all right, sir. <laughs> it's a fucking Uzi with a silencer on it. Yeah, he's like, he's like, what am I supposed to do with this? He's like, ah, uh, cover me. And then he runs away. <laughs> <laughs> well, he steals the guy's keys that he knocked the fuck out because he couldn't get a car from the receptionist, and and he, and he fucking runs out. And there's like a a black suit like leaning on the back of the car, like waiting for them to come back. And he just like sneaks in the car and drives off. And the guy's like, "Oh, whoa, get back here!" Yeah. And then uh, then Judgment Day is here, fellas. Yeah, fucking a. Because we're going to the church. And the priest is there, and Job shows up, and he's all fucking troned out. The, the priest is there, and the priest is there in like his fucking bathrobe. Oh, dude, he's going to get like a glass of milk or some shit. He's going to bed. Job basically goes down his Arya Stark list of people he needs to take care of. <laughs> Pretty much. Basically, yeah, and he starts with fucking Father McKean, and I would put him at the top of my list too because that's this guy's a piece of shit. And he sets him on virtual fire. It might literally be the worst effect in the film. Which I have to now. I have to tie this back to the video game because the PC game. Every person that Job attacks and kills in this movie are villains in the uh, in the game, which basically the the implication is that everyone that Job murders becomes a minion for his in the in the video game universe. It's very bizarre. I mean, it's possible. Anyway, this guy's fucking pixelated into oblivion. I don't even know why they would do that. I, I don't know. Again, like, I think they just went hardcore into this VR idea, and, and the effects team were just like, uh, I guess this looks pretty good. Like, mixing with the real world, I guess? That was the whole thing? Yeah, I just, it's not super effective. Like, I get what they're going for, but it just takes you out of the film too much. Yeah, but th this this is scraping the surface of, like, what is he doing? Well, Joe basically is on his revenge tour, and he and he goes to fucking Jake's uh, gas station, and this guy, he's had these fucking Ringo Starr-ass glasses on the entire movie. He finally takes them off his head just to get murdered. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Job doesn't murder this guy. Job uh, essentially lobotomizes this guy in... Oh, God, you're right. ...in ridiculous fashion. Like, first, like, first of all, like, Job is off in the background, like, conveniently covered by shadows and mist, and he's got big red next to him. It's actually, I thought, you know, I don't even want to call it a kind of a badass shot, but I thought it was kind of a badass shot. No, it's it's lit well. Yeah, and then they have an exchange, and Jake's like, get out of here, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so then, like, he, he, he manipulates the gas pumps to uh, extend and tie this dude up, looks into Jake's eyes, and then... I don't know how to describe this adequately, but here it goes. <laughs> here you go. A CGI, a CGI head of Jeff Fahey's forms in this guy's eyeball, but his teeth have been replaced by lawnmower blades. Yes. So this CGI head, then, like, you get a full screenshot of it, and it starts rolling forward and rolls over a CGI version of this guy's brain. Uh, and then the implication is this guy is now dumb. 
And Job says, the lawnmower man's in your head now. There's no escape. Bye. Which is also what happens to you when you die in the game. Oh, weird. <laughs> so, you be, like, he just makes you, like, what? Like he used to be? I don't know. I thought that fucking lawnmower blade for sure was just going to start tearing that brain up, and I thought, like, he was just going to start bleeding out of his eyes and nose and shit. You play as Angel in the game, and what happens is when you die, when you get game over, you are uh, pinned to some kind of weird, grassy uh, 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 surface, and then this Job head with the lawnmower blade comes and runs you over and kills oh you. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch, a, like, a Let's Play or some shit of that. Well, then we got to get the final victim. That fucking scene we mentioned earlier. I don't know, Joe, if you want to just take this one away. The fucking abusive dad? Well, the only scene that apparently was ripped somewhat from the original uh, story. Holy shit. <laughs> when, when I mentioned in the beginning of this episode, like, this is a direct result of Job's um, telekinesis. And him like exercising it and having to having to have to use it because like his brain is like overstimulated. So he's like listening to uh, the chick in the back who he like lobotomized in the VR because it's like at her house and she's just laughing in her head on the bed. And then he's just mowing the fucking grass like with his telekinesis with Big Red. Yeah, it's freaky. Yeah, and then in the book it's just you know it's being willed by magic or whatever, not by telekinesis. Because it's like a demon or some shit. Anyway. So, yeah, uh, Peter's dad is home and his fucking, his his uh, literal wife beater, um, uh, sitting there watching fucking wrestling. <laughs> yeah, Monday Night Raw with Vince McMahon on commentary. He's watching, you can hear Vince McMahon's very distinct <laughs> commentary voice. Watching wrestling in his fucking chair and then like, Suddenly, this fucking lawnmower blasts through his wall like the fucking Kool-Aid man. I mean, it is Big Red. You fucking asshole. <laughs> and this thing starts ripping apart the place, chasing this guy everywhere. Um, and uh, eventually it gets him, but his death is sadly off screen. This scene of this lawnmower ripping up this fuck, like this couch and shit, is visceral. Like, it's, it's really well done and well shot. And then... When, like, the final blow comes, this motherfucking lawnmower launches out the back door and, like, hits this guy in the face. Yeah. <laughs> it jumps at him. Disappointing. <laughs> is this the, uh, the, 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 the crime scene? Oh, yeah, this fucking cop that I swear to God is in, like, every movie. Oh, for sure. This is the guy from Ace Ventura. Oh, that's what he was from. I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. And he's got the same fucking haircut. He found Captain Winky. And then they threw him off the fucking building. Larry walks up to this because there's like a commotion next door. Walks up in his fucking pajamas and um, just grabs a police tape and goes, fuck this. <laughs> and just <laughs> walks underneath it. And he walks up to this cop who's just getting there going, hmm, yeah, hell of a thing. Uh, and then Angelo's like, what happened? And this cop's like, hello, stranger. Let me give you all the details of this crime scene. He says, he's like, hey, what's up, doc? Oh, he, he, you know, there's a bunch of fucking, you know, these two murders happening. He's got, you know, this fucking town's full of weirdos, schizos, bozos, what have you. And then, like, Job, like, manipulates their brains, and they're like, yeah, it was an accident. And Pierce Brown's is like, wait a second, I thought you just said it was murder. He's like, nope, accident. I'm going to fucking just write a nice, clean, tidy report. Bye. I was kind of into that. It was kind of cool. You see Job in the background, and Pierce Bronson is just, like, fucking staring him down. Wait, I don't, I don't think... I don't think this is in my cut. Well, because there's another scene after this that flows right into it. So Yeah, I, this was not in my cut, because Angelo walks up to this cop, and this cop it just, like... In full, not like he just discloses all the details of this crime scene, and there's a line about body parts in the bird feeder. Yeah, well, that's there too. Yeah, the bird bath, he, that's in there too. Yeah, and like he just says, like, oh yeah, somebody came into his house and just ripped him apart with a lawnmower. Hell of a thing. Yeah, they haven't found all of his body parts. The wife and son were asleep upstairs. Isn't that a weird thing? Hello, bye, stranger. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Doctor Angelo sees Job in the distance, but it's not just in the distance. He's on fucking Dr. Angelo's porch. Yeah, he's like in his house too. Right, so he he goes and runs away and he he goes to his house. He's like, Job, Job. And then he's like shouting for his wife and he finds his fucking wife who's just been, you know, a shit to him the whole movie. Uh, fucking standing there in an apron making a cake. Yeah, this is not in my cut because <laughs> she's gone. <laughs> she's baking up a storm. And he is freaked the fuck out by this. Well, I'm pretty sure it's like some kind of like, it's some kind of commentary like, oh, you know, they, you know, they have this really shitty life together and blah, blah, blah. And like all of a sudden she's like, I'm baking up a fucking storm today. I got cookies. I got cakes, cupcakes. What do you want? Any, what I, what I, I got it in the oven for you. And he's like, 
are you on fucking drugs? Like, what is happening here? And then, you know, you see Job, uh, you know, it cuts to him in, in Dr. D'Angelo's basement in the original VR chair. Tripping out in the fucking VR chair. Yeah, and... I don't know. Dr. Angelo goes down there and he rips the fucking headset off Job and Job's body is just like fucking drooling and he's like really confused so he puts the headset on and he starts freaking because Job's fucking uh, like in there essence is in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is trippy as fuck. Like in the virtual reality world like there's this kind of like it looks like a pastel painting. It was like an oil painting. Yes. Like a bad Photoshop filter. Yeah. Like Jeff Fahey in his kind of his simple Job attire like walking up to a farmhouse and he's kind of sitting there. It looks like kind of he looks at peace. Like he looks like he's achieved kind of you know uh, enlightenment. That's his shack. That's that, that's the fucking Thanos shack. Yeah, and, like, Pierce Brosnan looks in there, and then, he, like, the Job from inside the VR machine starts communicating with Brosnan, and he freaks the fuck out, and then Job, like, physical Job, looks over and also addresses him. Yeah. So now Job has basically mastered the, like, this fucking feat of existing in both. He's one foot in the virtual world and one foot in the physical world now. He walks in both and then blends them both, which is yeah. pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, so Job is just like, you know, you know, this is going to be a new electric dimension, and we're going to cleanse this Earth. It is very Tron-like. It's very, tr- I would say Tron Legacy, actually, because Tron Legacy's whole thing was that, like, the, the grid was supposed to be this new frontier where that human could humans could expand into but like this is the the polar opposite view on it it's very cynical and kind of you know it more more global domination than world peace yeah well sort of it's that it's that askew version of of peace you know what i mean like right. again, yeah it's, it's back to that ultron thing it's it's peace through it's peace through mass extinction and then rebuilding yeah cleanse the diseased planet and he needs to go back to umbrella and become pure energy so that he can go essentially become the internet <laughs> and call every household in in the in the world yeah bringing everybody together by 20 he says that by 2021 you know i'll i'll connect everyone he says by 2001 everyone will be connected to this technology i'm like you're fucking right it was yeah well yeah that's what was so it's creepy about it it's not even that he you know yeah it's a commentary on the internet i have to assume but it's also like it's not just connected together it's connected to him specifically yeah yeah well he's going to influence everybody yeah yeah he would become what we would consider the world wide web like he's going to jump into it and basically kind of be omnipresent in that sense like he would be everywhere he'd be in every device we would have the matrix it's very matrix like because he 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 makes a point about uh either in this scene or very towards the end and he says something like you know uh humanity was meant to be led and that's what i'm here to do yeah you they crave it or whatever we roll right into this weird ass fucking scene dude uh so the director and like a bunch of armed dudes show up in a van and um job ties up Pierce Brosnan in the fucking chair and like puts the virtual reality thing on. He's like, here, check this out. Watch what's going to happen. And then when Pierce puts the fucking um, headset on, he's like looking up and he can see through his house and he can see the van pull up. And then his wife goes to answer the door because like one of the suits like knock on the door and uh, his wife answers and they're like, is Angelo home? Dr. Angelo home? And she's like, yeah, let me get him one second. And he's like, okay. And he turns around and then she pulls out a fucking revolver and just lights this dude up. (laughs) Where did she get this gun? She got it from the kitchen. From fucking Cybo. That's where she gets it from. Because it's it's implied that Angelo's a pacifist. It's like, oh, you guys have a magnum. That's cool. (laughs) Yeah. So she fucking shoots this dude. He goes flying off the porch. And then... Pierce is like screaming his lungs out and she walks outside to go shoot another dude and this fucking guy shoots the fucking shit out of this woman with like a machine gun and I'm just like holy shit like this woman just reappeared to die there's that weird contradiction here where like Job's like oh you know people shouldn't experience pain or like you shouldn't cause pain to other people but he's like doing it the whole time well you know he just took you know five shots in a row of the fucking Chanel number five yeah that's right yeah so so then you know while this is happening Pierce Bronson he's all tied up in the machine and Job just basically starts taking these fucking uh men in black characters out by the he by turning them into popcorn yeah well he turns them into molecules is the way i was looking at it but popcorn works i guess but it's it's the whole effect is very comical because like joe okay first of all we have to address the fact that uh to attack these people joe (laughs) joe projects a giant fucking orange head yeah of himself he like zordon's outside the fucking house and like just kind of turns and looks at these guys and one of them starts going and then like 
his his body turns into little fucking CGI marbles, and they start swirling around. They make this funny noise, kind of like you just broke the balls in pool. Do you think David Lynch saw this film? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> ah, this is not a bad movie. <laughs> I kind of like it. So he kills these fucking guys, and then, like, the dude who was, like, shot, he, like, makes the grass grow around him to cover the body or something question mark yeah i didn't get that one and then so appears so so then jeff a he's make makes his way to umbrella to fucking um because he wants he need you know he needs to merge with uh the the mainframe and then like escape into the world or whatever and like into the, all the different hubs so then pierce Brosnan like hacks the system of the corporation from his house and then this is the part that I was trying to tell that I was talking about before where uh Percy from Green Mile is there and he's like, Oh sir, he's putting fucking uh you know, he's he's crypt cryptic code uh, you know, three you know, three fucking verification access codes and you can't fucking no outgoing whatevers uh so so basically like the there's encryption on it so you can't get in or out of the mainframe and apparently like the virus is so good that it keeps changing the code like every every couple seconds or every minute or whatever um so you can't you know you can't crack the code uh so Job calls, like, he calls McKean? Yeah, like, telepathically. This is hysterical, because, like, Terry's, like, asleep in his fucking truck somewhere, and then he just goes, and he's like, oh, Job! All right, Job, I'll come get you. <laughs> well, I think the implication <laughs> is that Job has just put him there for future reference, and is just keeping him there, like, brain dead. He's his fucking personal Uber. Jeff Fahey and, and fucking Terry arrive at the facility, and, uh, you know, the, 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 the gate just starts opening, and all these guys are like, oh, the gate opened by itself. And they tell Tim's, and he's like, get the National Guard, get them all out there. <laughs> and Jeff Fahey shows up with the fucking, uh, the VR version of Mosquito. He brings all these fucking <laughs> bugs with him. Holy shit. Yeah, he gets the idea from looking at a fucking bee plushie. These fucking bees, these bees look like shit garbage. Like, what are we, what is this? What is happening? Well, like, first of all, they just look like little, pe they look like little pieces of, like, glowing dust first. And then, like, you get one shot of one fully formed, and it looks like a fucking Pokemon. Yeah, and then it like yeah, fucking Beedrill, and it like it looks like that game Carnival of Carnage. Oh my god! Like you know, like the Area Fifty One <laughs> games, the shooting games, like where they come at you and yeah. they're like, the fucking light arcade gum, and like these. These these guards all just like they just run off or or are murdered one or the other. Yeah, like you never see them again. You see their guns, but their bodies are gone. There's not you don't see any shred of them. And meanwhile, Doctor Angelo gets saved by fucking Peter and his mother, who just show up and see the carnage of all these dead, you know, men in black looking motherfuckers. <laughs> You know, like Joe said, he he sends out. You know, he starts hacking the computer remotely, and and he finds in in the fucking minivan. Uh, or, you know, that these guys came in, he finds fucking just C4 explosives randomly. Yeah. Well, because, like, the the motor and, like, the the steering wheels are, like, Joe melted them all, so he can't drive to the place, but he finds explosives in the back, and then he's like, I need your fucking car! Before we get any further, I have to ask, what happens to the director in your cut? I don't think anything did, actually. Okay, it there is a scene, I know I've laid eyes on it before, I'm not dreaming, I didn't make this up, there's, a, there's supposed to be a sequence where Job deals with the director by turning him into a giant floating screen. Uh, I don't recall that. I know I've seen it. I have to dig it up later. McKean is sniped. Like, somebody shoots him right through the chest, and then Jeff Fahey, like, screams him to death until he, like, shoots himself in the head. It, which, that shot is kind of funny, too, because, like, Terry's like... All right, Job, I took you to the place you wanted to be. Yeah, it'd be nice seeing you. Going to the big Guinness in the sky. So Job gets there and, like, hooks himself up into the gyroscope and then, like, melts into cyberspace. And this is where we go right into reboot. Like, this is what it looks like straight up. He looks like he looks like fucking Megabyte. Oh, for sure. Real quick aside, just to get this out of the way, he, he molecules Tim's to death. Yes, he does. And then he goes in. Yeah, which, like, not even quite to death, because, like, Angela gets there, and Tim still, is still like... <laughs> yeah, he's just walking around, like, as molecules. So Pierce Brosnan, like, fucking rigs the whole place to blow. He's got all the C4. And for what Whatever reason he put instead of just like leaving job in the mainframe now here's the thing once job merges with the mainframe he can't all of his um augmented reality uh powers cease to be like he can't 
change once he's inside he can't change the real world he can only manipulate the virtual reality world right but he can manipulate machines via the virtual reality reality world but he can't like make people turn into molecules and shit right yeah but i'm assuming like he he can only interact with things that he has a direct connection to like he can't just go he can't just manipulate something that's not directly related or connected to him by the way and job is now basically a giant brown and gold monstrosity in this thing right for whatever reason pierce brosnan puts on a fucking suit i I guess to distract him like he sets all the bombs right and then he puts him and then he gets in a fucking gyroscope and then he's like Hey, Job, what are you doing? Stop that. And he's like, what'd you do? Why didn't Dr. Angelo, instead of setting these timers on these C4 bombs for 15 minutes, why didn't he do like four or five minutes and then just get the fuck out of there? I think his thinking here is that he wanted to see if he could talk Job down. Well, uh, yeah, but then he goes in there and he finds him fucking, he looks like uh, the this, you know, this fucking scarecrow. <laughs> He goes to examine Job's body, and, like, Job's body is now a husk because anything physical has been sucked out of him, and he's transferred, I don't know, his blood and guts and organs into the cyber world? Sure. He's literally become, like, digital juice because he goes up and he, like, t- goes to touch his face and it just, like, crumbles. It's just, like, a husk. Yeah, and, like, in, in this virtual reality space, like, Job is conceptually... This is kind of cool because Job is kind of in this space, and what he's surrounded by are like what looks like data enter and exit points yes he's trying to basically pull he's trying to access each one of these individually and hit it with a combination to see if he can get out basically he's trapped in this whatever this kind of like virus that angelo has sent yeah he's trapped in like a giant housing version of it yeah well he's he's trapped in the mainframe of umbrella laboratory and he's trying to get out via whatever you know would that be phone line or electrical line or whatever but he can't crack any of the codes because the virus keeps changing and changing the codes it's it's like it's like triple encrypted every three seconds or some shit it's kind it's 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 cool on paper but the problem is it's the CGI here is aged like absolute dog shit. Oh, it looks like garbage. He just keeps sticking his fucking stiff ass hand that doesn't have any moving fingers <laughs> into these like weird hexagonal things. And then his hand. It's like he's doing fucking E Honda's thousand hand slap. Yeah. It looks like he's like rotating like 18 sided die. And he's just like, oh, yeah, missed it. Access denied. Well, Dr. Angelo's in there and he's trying to like grab him and like, I don't know, like, I guess destroy his psyche inside the, the VR. But then I guess. Yeah. But Job just is like every time he karate chops fucking uh, Dr. Angelo in the <laughs> VR, he, like, freaks out. Like, it's doing serious damage to his brain or something. It's so fucking funny because, like, he, like, he backhands Angelo's, like, avatar and then Pierce Brosnan goes, ah! And does, like, a backflip in the fucking gyroscope. Well, then, and, and then he puts fucking Pierce Bronson's avatar on a cross. Yeah, he does. That's some weird shit. And fucking eye lasers him? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Are you telling me that Pierce Brosnan is the martyr in this situation? Oh, yeah. I don't know what they were trying to say in this situation. That's 100% what they were saying. You know what I mean? Because he, like, rigged the bombs. He's like, you are going to die. You're going to kill yourself to stop me. He knows the bombs are there and tries to, dis- tries to deactivate them, but he can't because he has no direct connection to them. Right. And so he's like, he's like, you'll die here with me. It's very Frankenstein-esque, this whole fucking movie. Yeah. This this whole, this, this exchange also is one of my favorite lines of the movie. And again, it's conceptually, it's when he, it's when it's it's during their initial exchange and like job says like you can't hurt me here i am god here i'm like that's kind of cool because i wish we got i wish we got more of that as opposed to uh you know a lot of the extra fluff this movie has yeah and, and just just to top it all off the only reason why job basically stops being a total insane person for even half a second is because peter runs into the facility to try to find Job and Dr. Angelo. And they, they, they're they able to overhear him through the, you know, just because this building has a lot of open spaces, so voices echo. Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Job has basically a moment of clarity. He's like, Peter, no. And and there's actually a cool visual touch to this because when Job becomes this this cyber god, basically, like his, his avatar looks like a kind of weird, fleshy, uh, virtual reality avatar with like Jeff Fahey's, you know, quote unquote face. 
But then as soon as he kind of embraces the idea that he's got here, he gets these weird kind of brown designs all over his body. And then when he gets angry, they actually envelop his whole face. So it's it's kind of saying like every time he has a moment of rage, he loses himself completely. But then when he hears Peter, all these designs and 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 kind of uh, textures, they disappear. And the, the kind of the fleshy human looking Job resurfaces. And it kind of fades in and out every time he hears about Peter. And then, it, like, he's of two minds, and he basically allows Angelo to leave to get Peter out of there because he would much rather have Peter out of there than, you know, see him get hurt. Right, and that's the point I was making before, too. Like, he's like, no more pain, save the boy. And he lets Pierce Brosnan go, and then he goes, and he can't open the fucking door, but then, you know, um, Job is able to manipulate the doors because he can man- manipulate the electronics because it's hooked into the system. So it was a door, grabs the kid, goes to run out, and then the fucking bombs start going off. Now, what the fuck is going on here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. Because these fucking bombs are exploding in all of the other places except for the fucking place where the mainframe is. And then not only that, like Pierce Brosnan and the kid from Last Action Hero are dead. They're fucking dead. I don't know why they felt the need to have this action sequence of them dodging explosions. They could have just... They, they just let him escape at that point. Why do I need that? Yeah. I, I don't need it. I don't know, but so they escape, and then all those bombs go off, and you're like, oh, I, I guess that's it. And then they're like, nope, cut back to the inside. Now the bombs that are at the fucking mainframe are going off. And guess what happens right before the fucking bombs go off? Joe finally finds his fucking exit point. A back door! He fucking finds the back door. A back door! And he fucking gets through, right? So Pierce Brosnan, as far as Pierce is concerned, um, he's gone. He's dead. I could have done without that scene. Yeah. The final scene would have been just as would have been more effective if we did not actually see him escape yeah if you just shown like him finding the back door and then cut to explosion you do have an air of ambiguity saying like did he get out or did he die i don't even think personally you need it i think you just have him freaking out bomb and then you have this last scene and must just get right into it him him like him like screaming and trying to solve all the things and then it just explodes and then it's ambiguous yeah exactly and you could end it there you you know there's this last scene, basically, where uh, Pierce Bronston, Peter, and Peter's mother... Pierce, Pierce Bronston, who has seemingly just adopted his neighbor's family? Yeah! yeah. He's just like, well, <laughs> your husband's dead and my wife's dead. I so guess we're getting You're together. my wife and son now, and my wife... Uh, it, depending on which version of this movie you bought, my wife is either dead or left town. <laughs> Welcome to my new family. I guess the kernel of uh, logic that you can come up with is that, you know, he talks about how he wants to take this research, go underground with it, and I guess continue it, and they're the only people that know about it that are still alive beyond him. Oh. Oh, I thought you were going to say, like, throughout the whole movie, he's been like, I wish Jake was my son. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe eternally. He did say that. He's he's like, oh, I wish I had a boy like Jake. And she's like, well, why don't you have one? He's like, don't worry, I will when my wife and your husband die. Yeah. So the movie ends where he, he's trying to have, like, this, like, heartfelt, like, uh, uplifting message about how things are going to get better. And then as they go to leave his basement... As he collects his things, the fucking phone rings. Yeah. And then they, they do the shot of, like, all the phones in the world ringing, and it's like, oh, fuck. Job mentions to Pierce Brosnan, he's like, the sound of all the phones ringing in the world at once will be my war cry. Yeah. yeah. And I thought that was pretty fucking badass. And then, like, but I don't know. It's kind of, uh, you know, again, escaping through that back door, like seeing him do that kind of takes the kind of takes the air out of it. Yeah. Or, or knowing this movie has a fucking sequel. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. Called Job's War. Oh, my God, it is. There is a sequel. Uh, <laughs> Not this year, yeah. motherfuckers. Not this year. Uh, That's Lawnmower Man. Uh, yeah, and then we cut to black and then another fucking Terminator ripoff soundtrack. The fucking... Like, it's just off just a little bit. Motherfucker. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, so where are we putting this, guys? Uh, okay. Here's here's my thing. Um, I have a secret shameful love for this movie. Um, and I've probably watched it at least five times in the last few years. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I kind of like this movie. I like it the same I like Frankenstein Unbound, where I'm like, this shit's bonkers. I, <laughs> I kind of love it. This movie is in three dimensions for me. I feel about it three different ways. <laughs> so, <laughs> as a Stephen King adaption, this is fucking the worst, most awful tripe imaginable. This is fucking garbage. That being said, 
as a science fiction movie, I really dig it. I really like the concepts that are going on here. I love I love the fact of kind of like artificially implanting intelligence via technology, like a mix of, uh, you know, ocular um, stimulation and um, chemicals, uh, chemical uh, uh, infusion. Like, I think that's fucking nuts accompanied with like archaic like occult symbols and shit to unlock some kind of primordial um powers that our brain would be capable of which is kind of like um altered states uh that's the movie i was trying to think of before um which is kind of cool there's a lot of cool concepts here but in that third dimension <laughs> sits shitty 90s action movie um, and it doesn't deliver on that front as I think it should. Um, also, I want the fucking Cybo the Chimp <laughs> and Job Smith buddy cop movie because that is, I think that would be a better movie than this altogether. Cybo the Chimp and Jeff Fahey in <laughs> The Lawnmower Man. I would buy it straight up. So yeah, um, it's not in the dumpster for me. It's, uh, it's, it's on the shelf, but it's, like, behind something else. Like, I'd, I'd watch something else before this. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat as you, Joe. Uh, there, there's a lot of things in this movie that I, I really enjoyed. I, I was honestly kind of enamored throughout the majority of the film. But at some point, just the effects just were, like, too hokey for me. And I, I get, obviously, this is 1992, and they're going for, like, what VR looked like in 1992. You know, I think back to that famous fucking uh, Treehouse of Horror Simpsons episode with Homer in the fucking VR. Oh, shit. And, you know, it, that was kind of the level of VR we were getting, you know, fucking, God, 27 years ago. I don't know, dude. The, the, the Simpsons episode is better than this. Oh, no doubt about it. But I'm saying that was the level of, yeah. you know, for lack of a better term, CGI that this would have been trying to emulate. Right. For the budget, anyway. Yeah. I... I I'm kind of curious to, uh, you know, not near in the future, but down the road to go back on my own and, and watch the theatrical just to see what Connor saw, just as a point of comparison. Uh, but, you know, with all that said, I think this is definitely a shelf movie, but I kind of agree with Joe, whereas that movie, you get it because there's just so much going on that it's 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 worth revisiting someday. But, I you know, I'm still processing it now, and I don't know if a rewatch would really do any good in you know the next five years. I would agree. This is a shelf movie too, as I've said. I do kind of, uh, it's it's a it's a guilty pleasure movie of mine, um, and I do have a friend who I hope is listening to this podcast. Uh, his his I, his I call him Iza. Uh, every once in a while, ever since I've told him about this movie, he likes to just message me unsolicited and say, "Hey, I'll still never watch Lawnmower Man." <laughs> <laughs> Whoever you are, give it a shot. So that's it. That's Lawnmower Man from 1992, directed by Brett Leonard. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor McGraw. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. This universe is mine. I am God here.